Sometimes, when living in the U.S., it is easy to be ungrateful for all the privileges and blessings we have. Houses, safe education, clean streets, cars, even food. And sometimes, it's even harder to forget that just on the other side of the ocean, chaos plagues the world. <laughs> Over the past decade, wars over rights, resources, land, religion, and terrorism have destroyed life for the Middle East, causing the once booming economy of these countries to collapse, and with it, its people. This has created the mass movement of people emigrating from countries of war and economic depression in the Middle East in search for a better life and a new start in Western civilization, and hence creating the Syrian refugee crisis. Even with so many wonderful organizations to help the 12.5 million refugees that have been displaced, there are still those whose views have forced humanity to take several steps back. Big news tonight from Donald Trump. He wants to send, in fact, he promises to send back all the 200,000 Syrian refugees. And they could be, listen, they could be ISIS. I don't know. Did you ever see a migration like that? If I win, they're going back. They're going back. I'm telling you. This is why I have gone on a quest to raise awareness and to inspire more help for the millions of refugees around the world. To do this, I decided to interview Syrian refugee Malik, who now works as a barista for Refugee Cafe. What is your name and where are you from? Yes, hey, how are you doing guys? Um, my name is Malik. Uh, um, I'm Syrian. I uh, I am Syrian, and uh, I'm from Syria. And I'm 23 years old. Uh, I came to United States before eight or nine months. I haven't counted <laughs> uh, since no August, 16th August. And I work at barista at barista for Refuge Coffee right now, and I run food catering business. How did you get to Atlanta? Actually, I came through uh, World Relief, an uh, organization that helps refugee to resettlement in the United States. How was that for you? Was that difficult for you? Or? Actually, it was, it was difficult for me since the beginning because uh, it's, it's hard to, to adjust uh, with the living wage and uh, language. It's the most, it was the most difficult thing for me. Um, what was like uh, life like before you became a refugee? What was the life before you became refugee? Like what were you doing? What was your job? Or uh, yes, <clears throat> so I was a student uh, for Damascus University. Uh, what did you I, study? I studied uh, for one semester or one uh, for two semesters actually one year dental technician. Uh, but the, I got arrested uh, twice. Since mm -hmm. that happened for me, I uh, I went, I ran out actually from Syria to Jordan. Why, uh, why did you get arrested? Uh, because I was activist and uh, I'm against the government decisions. Uh, and uh, uh, because of my opinion, they, they figured out that I'm an activist. So that's why they uh, they arrested me. Uh, so you said that you ran out of Syria. Yes. How was that like for you? Was that... It was difficult, the most difficult thing, the procedure I have been through because uh, uh, like I have I have to go out from Syria, the border of, uh, border of Syria and to check in the border of border of Jordan. And both of them are difficult procedure. Uh, but like I had, I had to uh, to bribe the the Syrian uh, the Syrian side border to let me out from Syria. So uh, they let me out, but the Jordanian uh, border they didn't let me in, let me check in. So uh, I I had to come back this period of time for I arranged. Uh, for this 
uh, this procedure to come out or not out actually uh, for three months and after that when I when I had got like everything ready to go uh, I went out like and the procedure was very easy for me because I I I had connections with both sides, the Jordanian and the Syrian. So they let me check in, check out and check in from the Jordan side. Uh, did you come here with any family? Yes, my parents and my sister. Uh, do you have any family still in Syria? Uh, yeah, absolutely. My cousin, my aunts, uh, all of them are in Syria. Have you been able to contact them or? Yeah, sure, sure. We contact them. We we get we get in touch with them every every week once once a week. And who is living in in Syria? Like the people who's living in Syria, they are suffering every day to look for food and wa water and. Uh, living wage, everything like specific details, they, they cannot, like e tiny details, they cannot find it there. So they are, they aren't doing fine though. And uh, who is living outside uh, Syria, they are like doing fine, but they are like working very hard because of the status of being refuge, refuge. So I'll give you like a bit of time to think about it. What is one memory of something that you saw or something that you went through yourself that really left uh, like an impact on you? Like something specific? I have thought about it. <laughs> but I'm not sure. I, I, I have, because I have been through a lot of things, bad, yeah. bad things, and most bad things, but like I need to to make it like level <laughs> or stairs so yeah, yeah. Uh, the most difficult thing was uh, uh -huh. yeah the most difficult thing was it's leaving in your homeland and uh, and the army who should take care about you instead of take care about you, kill you and arrest you. That's the most hurtful thing I have been through. So yeah, that's like, that's kind of, because the, the second, the second arrest, uh, arrested I have, I had, uh, actually it was reports from my, close friends who who made like reports about me uh, and say and say that uh, I'm activist or I was activist so that made me made them take advantage of that and arrested me inside the college and made me sign about paper and documents I shouldn't sign, but I didn't have any choices. So that's why I had to sign it. And the paper and the document says, like, I have to work as a spy for them inside the college and tell them about who, who is doing, like, activity against the government, peaceful activity. The government we have it, it's kind of criminal government and the criminal president and uh, they, they made me like report, uh, they made me sign papers says uh, that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell the government also who is an activist against the government. So yes, uh, I, I did sign it and I didn't have any choices. So that's why I ran, I ran out from my, I left my, my my college, I left my study, I left everything behind and ran out from Syria. If your friend who reported you to the police was right here, what would you say to them? Bad word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, 
like I I would like to advise them and make them rethink about what they are doing and they are doing wrong. Uh, what are your hopes for the future? Hopes for the future. Ah, I have a lot for the future. <laughs> uh, so uh, my bad experience was with with uh, work, uh, like workplaces. Uh, I had to work like difficult job. I had to work uh, with uh, twelve or thirteen hours in a day in, in Jordan and even in Syria, and uh, we didn't take like that 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 much of money, and the salary was very cheap very cheap and it was for just paying the rent and uh, and paying the bill actually yeah uh, actually my uh, my hope in the future my country uh, it becomes uh, a peaceful country peaceful homeland because everyone belongs to to a home, to a land, so I belong there. So I hope that Syria gonna back on her feet. Yeah. What uh, would you like to say anything to the people, not only in the school, but like in general, just people who live in the U.S. or in Europe? Who don't really know too much about what's uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Actually, the the let me let me tell you about something about the refugee as a word by itself. Refugee who 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 comes who comes out of his place, of his homeland, of his land, and leave it left it behind to look for peaceful place. So those people are like lost, confused. They don't have full information about the host land. So hopefully, I hope from the community and from the world to understand the situation and understand that the refugees are like, I say it like all the time as a baby, who wants to grow up and uh, adjust. So be patient on the refugees in your community and help them and support them. And uh, they will be thankful for, for you and for the whole community. Fair, that's great. Please, to make the world a better place and to help the millions of refugees around the world, donate to a well-known charity or also donate to the organizations in your local communities, such as Refugee Cafe, which can be found at www.refugeecoffeeco.com. Just click on the Donate tab, scroll down, and click Donate. Thank you.